And here is SOL topic number eight, compositions and inverses. Let's take a look at a few reminders. Composition. This is when you have a symbol that looks like this, f of g of x. And that means to substitute one entire equation into the other. The tip that we're going to show you on the Desmos calculator, well, firstly, we need to type f of x and g of x as two separate functions in Desmos. And then there are two types of questions you might see. If you need to find a composition value, like f of g of 7 or g of f of negative 3, we're simply going to type that symbol and get our answer. That will look like example number 1 today. Or b, if you need to find a composition expression, like f of g of x or g of f of x, we're going to type that symbol and look at its graph. Then we're going to type each answer choice until we have the same exact graph. Let's look at examples one and two. So example one says, given f of x equals 2x squared minus 8 and g of x equals x plus 2, what is the value of f of g of 5? So let's pull up our Desmos calculator and... If you don't have your Desmos calculator yet, please make sure you pull that up. I'm going to define f of x... So I'm simply going to type f of x equals, and it's 2x squared minus 8, 2x squared minus 8. So that's f of x. I also need to define g of x. So I'm going to come to a second equation and do g of x, and that equals x plus 2. Once I've defined those, and here are their graphs if you're interested in their graphs, I need to figure out what is f of g of 5. So I'm simply going to type that symbol f of g of 5, close my parentheses, and I have my answer. Simple. It's 90. And that's pretty easy for our first type of, uh, of example. When we're looking for a value, we define f of x and g of x, and then we just type the symbol. And that's answer choice C. Pretty cool. Example number two Here's a different f of x, and here's a different g of x. This time, we're looking for what is equivalent to g of f of x. So we're still going to have x's in our answer, and clearly we have that in our answer choices here. So we're going to go do the same thing. We're going to pull up our Desmos calculator. I'm going to clear out this f of x and this g of x, and I'll close that out too. And I'm going to type a new f of x. This time, f of x is equal to 2 thirds x squared plus 1, and that's f of x, and let's see what g of x looks like. g of x is equal to 6x minus 15. Okay, so we've defined f of x and g of x, and I'm interested in this one. Now look at the order. It's g of f of x. So I'm going to type in g of f of x. I'm going to close my parentheses. And now we have a bunch of different graphs. Now, I'm not interested in f of x individually, so I'm going to turn that one off. I'm not interested in g of x individually, so I'm going to turn that one off. And now I'm just looking at g of f of x, and here that is. Now, what I need to do is figure out which of these answer choices would produce the same exact graph. So I'm going to choose answer choice A first, and I'm going to type that in. It says 4x squared minus 13. So, ooh, that's close, but that is not the same exact thing. So 4x squared minus 13 is not one of my answer choices. When I know I don't have an answer, I put a big x through it. And I'll move on to answer choice B. This is 4x squared minus 9. So I'm going to change that 13 to a 9. And, ooh, I think I've got it. Now, I think that's exactly it, and I can turn one of them off. Actually, I'll turn the green one off. Yep, there's the red one, and then back on, and then back off, and then back on. I have exactly the same thing, so this must be the same thing as the composition. And I have this answer choice, and it's answer choice B. You can type in answer choice C and answer choice D just to practice and see that it's not the same thing, just to be sure. But now we have our answer. Let's look at our second reminder, inverses. Inverses will reflect like a mirror over the line y equals x, like this. Here is the line y equals x. That is our mirror. If you sort of tilt your head, you can see that this parabola and this parabola are exact mirror images. Here's a trick. 
If we are given two equations, let's simply type them both into Desmos and see if they are reflections over the line y equals x. I suggest you also type y equals x and graph that. Here's another trick. If we're given a point or a coordinate, we will swap the x and the y to get the inverse point or coordinate. For example, if we have the point 3, negative 5, and that's on one of our functions, then swap those two values and the point negative 5, 3 will be on its inverse. A couple tips, these symbols, f inverse of x or g inverse of x with the little negative 1 up here, these notations mean the inverse, and they're also just fancy names for y. And another tip, if we have two functions and we want to see if they are inverses, their compositions need to both be equal to x. In other words, if we were looking for f of g of x or g of f of x, both of those compositions, if they are inverses, will have to equal x. And that's why y equals x is our mirror. Let's look at our final example. The graph of the function g is shown on the following graph. So here is the graph of g. It looks like a square root function. Which graph best represents the inverse of g? So we're looking for the inverse. Well, I think the easiest way to attack this is using that tip. If we know one of the points, and I know one of the points, it's right there, that's the point four, zero. On the inverse, I'll do a little inverse thing here. I'm going to swap, and I will have 0, 4. So I really need to look at which one of these four graphs has the starting point at 0, 4. Well, 0, 4, it's not here. 0, 4, aha, it is right there. 0, 4, not here. 0, 4, not here. So simply knowing that this point is on G, so therefore this point would be on the inverse of G, gives us this as our answer choice, and we're finished with that inverse question. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and have fun with your packet. Practice, practice, practice. See ya.